All right, well, let's head over to Adelaide United 4, Western United 1. Jacob, the story here is, of course, Nestory Irinkunda. It's been a tumultuous season. There's no doubting that. He's had ups, he's had downs. Uh, but as, as highs go, this is a pretty good one. A hat-trick, uh, a couple of brilliant goals, celebrating with the backflips might potentially be the last time that Adelaide fans get to see yeah. him do that backflip at Highmarsh Stadium, which is a, a, you know, a sweet feeling, but also a little bit bitter, of course. Uh, it's yeah, it's very bittersweet. Like you said, that's the perfect way to sum it up because he's just such a talented player and he's so electric to watch. The moment he gets the ball, everyone's up on their feet. It's just in anticipation because they know that something's going to happen. And it's going to be a shame to not have that again next season. You know, that sort of, he, he just brings such an energy to the game whenever he's on the pitch. It's it's fantastic to watch, but I'm genuinely so, so, so happy um, for him. For, that was such a well-taken hat-trick and I think sort of shows his, his development, even just over this season, you know, where it's been a lot of times where he's been able to have impacts in short spurts, you know, over five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it might be. But here it was for the, you know, 70, 80 minutes or whatever it was that he was on the pitch where he was just head and shoulders above almost anybody else uh, on the field at the time and his ability to, you know, pace himself, not overdo things. He had a cool head on him, you know, in the post game, he was talking about with the third goal, the headed goal, he, he laid the ball off to Stefan Mork to, who crossed it back in and he was, you know, talking about how, you know, he wasn't particularly pleased with, you know, the weight of the pass that he made. And it's him sort of, you know, his ability to be able to break things down and realise that, okay, I've scored a hat-trick, but where can I still improve? I think that's the sort of mentality that is going to take him really, really, really far. And it's awesome to see. And yeah, I just, I'm genuinely, it's an awesome feeling to have, have seen him get that hat-trick. Paletti, we know that Nesta loves to put a little bit of pressure on himself and, and Jacob's right that's a quality that helps players improve but we've seen him struggle at, at times this season as well when he hasn't lived up to those expectations he's had a lot of learning opportunities is probably the right phrase throughout the year you know the red card in the original rivalry he needs to learn to keep his head was what a lot of people including us were saying and it, we talked a couple of weeks ago in the second leg against uh, Melbourne victory at Amy that oh, I thought he'd done that oh, sorry that was at High Marsh, but you know, he's been on this journey after he sealed the move to Germany. That was always going to happen. But it feels like he's definitely leaving Australia in a better place than he was when, even a few months ago when he signed that deal. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's really sort of started to settle down a little bit. And I think maybe Carl Bart had a little bit of a conversation with him. Um, you know, we saw him come off the bench a little bit as opposed to starting, maybe try to reduce that pressure um, a little bit. But yeah, definitely some maturity that comes with that. And there's every chance that we're still going to see him in the A-League next season. Bayern could honestly just choose to send him out on loan, and I can't think of a better place to send him on loan to continue his development while keeping him on Bayern's books than back at Adelaide United. He'll be he'll be around a uh, couple of... Uh, the joys of walking through the city. Motorbikes in the background. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, um, you know, like keeping him in familiar surroundings. Like, like depending on who you listen to, you've heard some things where... Uh, you know, he struggled when he's had to go into unfamiliar surroundings um, without sort of his support network. And, you know, speaking as a, not a, not necessarily as a footballer, but, you know, when I moved to Tasmania last year, not having that support network for me that I was just so used to was quite a struggle, you know, not being able to just duck in and see my friends at, you know, football games or whatever. So I think, you know, that could be an option for him. And I think another year of Aaron Kunda in the A-League is exactly what both him and Bayern need. It's, a, it's an interesting idea. I'm going to disagree with you because I think at some point the bird has to leave the nest and you've got to get to sink or swim point at some point in time. And, you know, Nesta's had this last... Uh, what would it be, four to five months now where he's known that he's leaving and he has time to prepare for that move. And, you know, on the balance of things in terms of development as well, you want to be playing at a level that is constantly challenging you. And I'm not saying that the A-League is not challenging for Nesta, but he's clearly been the best player for Adelaide when he's been on the field a large portion of the time. And Christian, if he were to leave Bayern Munich and go a loan deal, I know the popular thought is that he'll be playing with the academy team. But if he was going to leave, I would hope that it would be 
in a more challenging environment and somewhere away from home to challenge him perhaps at an easier level than the Bundesliga, but still having to deal with that idea of being away from home. Yeah, I don't disagree with you, Lockie, but at the same time, I still think if he were to stay at the A-League for another season, it wouldn't do him the world of harm because, you know, we look at this season, I think it's a real shame that we didn't get to see, you know, the very best of him for long stretches of the season. And I just think, you know, Culver perhaps could have been less stubborn in his, you know, his tactical approach and put more of an effort toward creating a system that actually fits his needs and qualities without, you know, totally dismissing the defensive side of the game, which I think, you know, safe to say is why he's been left on the bench at times. So, you know, we've seen how many players have we seen over the years, um, Australians moving abroad and they haven't been quite ready for it where we think they're ready, but in actual fact, you know, they're in a new environment um, it's obviously much more difficult to play um, in a European system, whether you're in the youth academy or in the first team. So, I mean, he's so young as well. I mean, to play another season in the A-League, not just because it would be great for Australian football, um, you know, to see him on our shorts for another season, I think it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, you know, the worst thing to happen, I think, for his development. Look, you're right in the fact that look, there have been plenty of Australian players that have gone overseas and, you know, quote unquote, haven't been ready yeah. for it. What I'd argue is that, that that's not a skill issue. That's about the mentality and the drive to succeed and the adaptability in unfamiliar environments. And as we've talked about, you know, in the last 10 minutes, I think he's run that gauntlet this year. He's had the pressure on him, you know, very rarely is, you know, uh, you know, Australian football media loves to hype up its young players going overseas, but never has the attention been so focused on one individual. And he's had to deal with that. He's had to deal with that pressure. And it's not to the same scale that he's going to see overseas, but it's it's an intensity that I don't think anyone else has had to deal with, uh, at least recently in the A-League. So, look, whatever happens, we, we wish him the best. And he's certainly had an amazing finish. And their season's not quite done yet, Jacob. There's still a few games to go. And I'm going to open the door just a little bit for Adelaide United because, as we've said all year, they are a confidence team. They are a young team that feeds off good performances. And when it's going well, it goes well. And when it's not going well, they seem to sink even further. Now, they've had... Two wins in a row now, one uh, against the Jets and now here against Western United as well. They'd probably have to win all but maybe one, so maybe three and a draw to get into finals. But I'm just I'm just leaving the door open a little bit. Well, what I will say is that uh, if for whatever reason I can't watch the next game, they'll probably win it because the last two games both wins. The Jets game, I was at dinner, so couldn't watch it. And uh, this one, I was unwell and I was at home. So, <laughs> um, you know, if, if I can't for whatever reason catch uh, next week's game, they might win. But no, I, I agree with what you're saying in that they're definitely a confidence team. And I think that that's down in large part to both the number of extremely young players that they have in their side, a lot of youth players, a lot of players who haven't had a huge amount of minutes, and then a lot of very experienced players who, you know, maybe don't have that, that they can't rely on their natural talents as much anymore and things like that. And and if things are down, they're going to get down and sort of in the back end of their careers. And I think Colviet's even spoken about that, how there's not really any of those bridging players in those mid-20s sort of age range who can just keep putting in consistent performances to keep the team going. So it is very much based on current form and if they can carry that forwards. I'm I'm just so reluctant to say that they'll be able to keep this up though because they had a good start to the season, you know, two very good wins, went to victory, managed a point there in what was a pretty tough affair there for both teams and then just com- the wheels completely fell off after that. So it's one of those things where Yes, they could continue on with this form and and maybe somehow make finals, but they could also just completely implode again. I will mention, though, that I think two players have been absolutely key in in recent weeks for Adelaide United. The first is Stefan Mork. Uh, He's not necessarily had the impact in terms of, you know, goals that people may have expected him to when, when he was signed. But I think that what he's brought to the midfield for Adelaide is just sort of an energy and a willingness to get forward and, and to do something. And now there's sort of this front four that's forming for Adelaide with Ibasuki, Irinkunda, Clough and Mork. And they all have this flexibility. They can all operate really well around each other. Ibasuki can drop into the midfield. Mork likes to get forwards. Irinkunda can come inside. Clough can move out wide. It's 
it's that sort of flexibility that that keeps opposition on edge a little bit and we saw a lot of it in this last game actually against western united where there was some really good interplay in and around the box and i think that that's starting to come along nicely and since stefan walk's been brought into the side we've seen a lot more of that the other one is another midfielder and a youngster and that's ethan aligic who he just has such a high work rate and engine on him it's insane to watch he is absolutely everywhere and the way that adelaide have set themselves up in recent weeks has him and Issa in sort of a double pivot defensively and what that means is that Isaias now that he's a little bit older and I'm sure he won't hate me for saying that (laughs) he's getting on a bit um, maybe doesn't have that pace and agility that he used to have he can sort of play that anchor role which is really good at where he can just stop somebody who's running at him and what that allows Ethan Aligic to do is to just run around the rest of the pitch patrolling defensively and he's been very good at that because of his high work rate and I think those two additions Mork and Aligic have been absolutely key in keeping Adelaide uh, in the game um, but also so creating chances and defending well. Just on Stefan Mork as well. Of course, it was the Football Friends derby in this game. Another little podcast reference there. Uh, Adelaide United and then Western United with Ben Garuccio. Uh, I believe they talked about uh, having some kind of forfeit for the loser. About shaving their beard or shaving their hair or something like that. So <laughs> well, it'd be good to listen out to those guys next week. But Pelletti, there was also a little bit of moment of madness towards the end. Tamaki Imai and Ryan Kiddo getting into it a little bit for me it looked like they both had a fist of each other and then the last hand of Imai hits the throat potentially yeah I mean look the the FA uh match review panel have ruled on it it's two match suspension for uh for Tamaki Imai uh very similar to what we saw uh Izzy Nino cop last week um for the Jets in the dub competition so I don't think there's any real surprises there um, and yeah, I, I think it's consistency at least. 